And I heard the Lord say, there's a curtain hanging right now over this nation, and it's keeping people from seeing the truth about what's really happening on the other side. He said, Biden's criminal history and rebellion. Hey y'all, this is Troy. So I have a prophetic message to share from God that has to do with President Biden. It has to do with a word of knowledge, something that's coming in the future, but it also has to do with some past criminal charges. I also have a word to share with you from the Lord, a word of encouragement. Now, this is something that I believe is encouraging. It's for the building up of the body. It's, it's it, you know, the Lord wants to build us up in faith today. Yet at the same time, this is also something that I know could potentially step on some people's toes, and it may be something we don't necessarily want to hear, but I believe it's going to be good for us. It's going to be good for me. Uh, this is something I need to hear. I would encourage you, if this is something that you know steps on some toes today, that you would just take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, and say, Lord, is this something for me? Or maybe this is a message for somebody else today. You know, maybe it's not specifically for you, but that's why we need the confirming voice of the Holy Spirit in our own lives. Because when it comes to general prophetic messages like this, sometimes the entire word is for everybody, right? But then other times there's something that's for us, but you know, there's some there's another part of it that's for someone else. You know, so we need to hear from the Lord for ourselves. We can't just go through somebody else. Now, I'm going to take a moment to say this, and then I'm going to share this word. If you're listening to this video and you've never heard from the Lord for yourself, and I don't mean an audible voice, you know, not everybody has to hear God audibly or something like that. But if you've, if you've never heard the still small voice of the Holy Spirit in your heart, it could mean one of two things. Number one, it could mean you haven't met the Lord yet. You haven't come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, and you need to make that decision today. You need to make him the Lord of your life. You need to say, God, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came to the earth as a man, that he lived a perfect life, and that he died on a cross, and he took the punishment for all of my sins upon himself. And when, when he did that, he gave me the chance to be forgiven, to be free from sin, to be free from the punishment of sin, to be free from judgment because of his faithfulness because of his grace. You can say that to the Lord today and your entire life can be radically changed because what happens when we believe in what Jesus did for us at the cross is we are forgiven, we're made new, and God sees us as righteous. He sees us as pure, as if we've never sinned. Listen, that's an amazing place to be. It's an amazing place of acceptance and, and love and friendship to be in. And we get to start that friendship with the Lord where, where we get to talk with him daily. We get to walk with him and he begins to change us, transform us. But he also begins to lead us. He, he's our comforter. He's our guide. He's our teacher now. He's our friend. So if you want that today and you need that, don't put it off. Don't wait. Call out to the Lord today. The word says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Cry out to the Lord today. Say, Jesus, I need a real relationship with you right now. And God will be faithful and he will respond. And if that's you, I encourage you to start reading the Bible, jump into the gospels, jump into the New Testament letters. And if you've already read the Bible and yet that's still you, jump in again and ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me through the word. And God will begin to speak to you daily through the written word, but also through the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. But listen, my friend, if you know Jesus personally, but you don't hear his still small voice, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They know me. They hear my voice. If you don't hear his voice on a regular basis, my encouragement to you is to take time every single day to prioritize that relationship. Make it a priority. See, the Holy Spirit oftentimes doesn't shout at us. He oftentimes whispers. In scripture, we see that the Holy Spirit is like a dove. That, that's the representation of the Spirit. He's, he's calm. He's gentle. He's quiet. You know, like, and... If we're not willing to prioritize the relationship, we're going to have a much harder time hearing what he has to say. We can prioritize it through reading the word. We can prioritize it through going into the secret place, which just means spending time alone with the Lord. Now, sometimes we get alone with the Lord and we start to list off all the things we need for God to do for us, right? Here's my prayer list, God. Here's all the things I need you to do. And we just spend the whole time, you know, shouting at God, essentially. But God is looking for relationship. My encouragement would be, don't just tell God what you need. Spend time waiting upon the Lord as all the psalmists, you know, would do. Spend time waiting upon the Lord and let him speak. Expect him to speak. 
Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. You can expect him to speak to you if you're his sheep. Don't be afraid of listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit. He wants to lead you and he wants to guide you. And also when that begins to happen and when you begin to wait upon the Lord, you'll begin to sense the presence of God in new ways uh, that you've never experienced before or you haven't experienced for a long time for many people. And I just, I sense the presence of God coming into the room right now because the Holy Spirit is confirming this. He's drawing us as his people back to the secret place, back to his side. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, if you'll just come and you'll just walk with me, my people, on a daily basis, things will get better. It's not going to all change at once in an instant, but you'll begin to see through my eyes and you'll see clearly my perspective and you'll begin to realize the victory that I've already won for you at the cross. You'll begin to do everything out of that motivation. You'll be motivated by my victory, by my grace. You'll be motivated by my presence within you. And that's a word from the Lord right now, but that that is what the word also says, you know, that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God dwells within us. The word even talks about the church being built up into a dwelling of the Spirit of God. And as people who, you know, are part of this body of Christ, we shouldn't just be looking for more knowledge about God, or, you know, we shouldn't just be looking for the best, you know, Bible studies. Like those things are amazing. We need them, but we should also be focusing on being a dwelling place for the Spirit of God, because that's what the Word says that the church is. We're being built into a dwelling place of the Spirit. Sometimes we don't need another answer. Sometimes we don't need another quote-unquote solution. Sometimes we just need to spend time in His presence, waiting upon Him. I hear the Lord saying, I have good news for you today. And that good news is found in a personal relationship with me, where you come in and you allow me to encourage your heart. You allow me to strip off the, the fears and the anxieties and the wounds and the things that other people have done to you, and you allow me to replace those things with my love, with my loving kindness, with my tenderness, with my grace. You allow me to, to replace the things that shouldn't be there with my truth. I hear the Lord saying, my spirit is speaking very clearly over those who are willing to come in and to rest in what Jesus has done and to wait to listen. So I hope y'all can receive that word today, but I'm going to jump in. I didn't expect to, sh to start the video this way, but the Holy Spirit is just moving and I'm just going with it. But this is what I saw on March 10th. I saw an image of what resembled to be a doorway with a curtain hanging between the doorway. So there's a doorway and there's a curtain hanging in the middle instead of a door, right? And I heard the Lord say, there's a curtain hanging right now over this nation. So he's talking about the United States of America, but this message is also going to apply more generally, I believe, to other people as well. Okay, so he said, there's a curtain hanging right now over this nation, and it's keeping people from seeing the truth about what's really happening on the other side. And then he said, step over to the other side. Now, this is where this could get confusing if we don't understand what God is saying. God's not telling us to remove the curtain and see all of the secrets that people are keeping, you know, or to see, to discover all of the lies or the corruption that's been hidden or, or buried or whatever. God's not looking for us to uncover everything in the natural. He's looking for us to look at the problem from a different perspective, from his perspective. Okay, because this is the next thing he said. He said, step over to the other side. And he said, you don't have to know what's going on behind the curtain to know what's going on. Let me say that again. You don't have to know what's going on behind the curtain to know what's going on. Why can he say this? And number one, because we don't have to know everything. God knows everything, but we don't, we're never going to know everything and we don't have to. We are in this relationship where we can trust him with what we don't know. But at the same time, we also have the Holy Spirit who's able to share with us what we do need to know. He's able to speak to us. And I encourage you to go read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and where it talks about how the Holy Spirit reveals even the deep things of God to us in our spirit. He's able to speak to us. And then I heard the Lord say this. He said, it's scary. You know, he's talking about the things behind the curtain in this nation, right? And this is, applies to many nations, I'm sure, at, at, at the same time. But he said, it's scary, it's bad, it's criminal, but you don't have to know. So I love this. The Lord is saying, it's there. The information's there, Right but you don't have to know. And I hear the Lord saying this right now. You don't have to know it, the information, in order to step into all I've called you to do. You just have to be obedient with what I have said to you, with what I've given you, with what I put in your hand in this season. And then the Lord said this that night. He said, you rest in what I have done for you and keep handing the nation's troubles back over to me. And I love that. It's like a father 
you know, a child relationship where it's like, you know, a loving parent, like, I, I don't know, but you know, you're my parent. I'm going to give this to you and I'm, I'm going to go to bed. You stay up and you figure it out. You know, like that's what children do. And that's what God is expecting us to do with him. He said, keep handing the nation's troubles back over to me. And then he said, I know what I'm doing. I know why I have allowed and I am allowing certain things to occur. And then the Lord said, focus on the one thing that matters, what really counts. You know, it's like Jesus, you know, speaking to Martha and then Mary's in the room, right? And he says, Martha, Martha, you're worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. He says, Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. He says, she's done the one thing that's needed, which was sitting at the feet of Jesus and learning from him, hearing his voice clearly. There's so many competing voices out there between the media, you know, the news, our favorite podcasters, our, even our favorite preachers sometimes, you know, like can be just become a competing voice against what the Lord is saying. That's why we have to learn to hear his voice so that we can come back to what really matters. The Lord said this next. He said, you don't need to know in order to get things done. And then he said, jump aboard my train. So many of us are jumping aboard a lot of different trains in society you know, the world is, that's the, the way we work now. We jump on board this train or that train or this train against that train. You know, it's like people are moving in a certain direction or moving against something or toward it. And we're, we're going one way or the other. And we have to figure out where we land. And the, I, man, I hear the Lord saying this right now. You don't always have to figure out where you land on an, a certain issue. Sometimes the issues are critical and you need to know what the word of God says about it and where you stand on it. But sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're just a distraction. The Lord said this next. He said, jump aboard my train. Deliver the message I tell you to, to deliver. This includes corporately and as individuals. And then he said, your life is carrying a message and it affects those around you. <laughs> Man, I just see this picture right now of each person that's listening. I, I, I see individuals going throughout their lives, right? And they're carrying this message of truth, the gospel message that Jesus loves you, that Jesus died for you, that, that God desires to know you, that God loved you, and that he had a plan for your life even before you were born. This message of hope and truth, you know, that we're carrying as Christians. And, and I see that the distractions are coming in to cut off the message. Not to stop you from living your life, but to stop you from spreading the message. The Lord said this. He said, your life is carrying a message and it affects those around you. And he said, what message are you delivering? What are you preaching? With, with your words and actions, you represent my kingdom to the world. And then I heard the Lord say this, and this is a word of knowledge about Biden, but then there's another word about him coming in a few minutes. Um, but I heard the Lord say espionage. And then he said caretakers. And then he said a laughing stock. And then I heard Biden dropping charge of things, not understanding what's going on. And he said, it's all related. So he's saying all these things are related. Then I heard a history of inadequacy and rebellion. And then I heard he's putting up a front. So the Lord is saying, these are things that are taking place, right? And that are related. But then he said this next, he said, does it matter? Does it matter? So the Lord's saying, yes, I see these things happening, but does it ultimately matter? when it comes to what I've asked you to do, what I've called you to do. I, I hear the Lord saying that. Then the Lord said this. He said, let me show you my people what's right. Simply do what I tell you to do and you'll be just fine. I think a lot of times we have that thought, if this doesn't get uncovered, things are not going to get better. But that's not always the end goal that God has in mind for each individual. And then the Lord said this. He said, one goal of the devil is to distract you with what's happening under the table and behind the scenes. But if you trample on his whole operation through one swift step of faith, it really doesn't matter, does it? The devil's trying to distract us with, with trying to leave us breadcrumbs like to what's happening behind the curtain, right? You know, if you just come down this rabbit hole, you'll figure it out and then you'll have the knowledge, right? But it, it's kind of similar to what the devil said to Eve in the garden. You know, he was trying to get her to stop thinking about what God had said. He was trying to lead her down a different path. Is it always wrong to consume information? No. Is it wrong to go down that rabbit trail? No, but it is wrong to keep going if the Holy Spirit steps in and says that's enough. That's when it becomes wrong. When the Holy Spirit says, okay, that's enough for today. You don't need to know that today. You know, like that's when we have to put a stopper and we have to say, okay, help me to focus on what you want me to focus on. But God said, we have this ability to trample on the devil's whole operation through one swift step of faith. And then the information doesn't even matter at the end of the day, right? What is that swift step of faith? It's trusting God. 
It's taking our trust out of knowing enough and putting our trust back in what Jesus has done and reminding ourselves of who we serve, why we love him, that because he first loved us, because he died for us. And then also, what is our mission here on earth? Man, I'm going to take the opportunity today to share Jesus with somebody. I'm going to love somebody with the love of Christ because that's why I'm here. And then I heard the Lord say this, another word of knowledge about Biden. He said, Biden's criminal history and rebellion. And he said, it will be raked over the coals once more, but it won't last long. And then he said, there are more important issues to attend to. So I believe the Lord's saying it's going to get raked over the coals again, but it's not necessarily going to lead to much is how I'm interpreting that. But later I heard this, and this is kind of a riddle, but it's also a word of knowledge, I believe. I heard security check off stage. Something is going to happen with his handler, a misstep reported as tomfoolery. And then he said, related to the rest of this. So I believe this is a, the Lord's talking about an event that's going to take place that's going to have to do with these different things. I just want to read a couple of verses and then I'm going to be done. So this is Colossians 2, 2 through 10. And this, this has to do with the idea of us as, as, as Christians choosing to release the information to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't have to know everything. And I'm going to stop fearing what's on the other side of that curtain because the fear is distracting me from my purpose. And I don't want to be distracted anymore. I don't want to be led around by fear. I don't want to give any room to fear in my life. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a a sound mind. I am going to move forward with the courage and confidence that the Holy Spirit gives me, knowing that His Word planted in my heart is adequate. His grace is enough today. His truth is sufficient knowledge for me today. His truth is good enough. This is Colossians 2. Look at this, y'all. This is so encouraging. Paul is praying, and he says, he's praying that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, and that they would attend to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself. So he's saying, there's a lot of mysteries in the world, but there's God's mystery, which is the most important one. And the answer and the true knowledge, the, you know, the full assurance of understanding is Christ, is knowing him. If you know him, you have the answer to the ultimate mystery. Verse three, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So again, if we're looking for wisdom or we're looking for knowledge and we go past Jesus to find them or we go somewhere else, we're going to miss it. Verse 5 says, For even though I am absent in body, I'm nevertheless with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your orderly manner and the stability of your faith in Christ. Verse 6 says, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. A lot of times, us, when we go down the rabbit hole and we look and we're trying to find the answer to something and we're desperate for an answer, we're not approaching the Lord with gratitude, but instead we've picked up this weight of anxiety or fear and it's weighing on our shoulders. The Lord says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. If we'll cast our cares upon the Lord, you know, like Mary sitting at Jesus's feet and we'll begin to just be grateful, <laughs> all of those things will melt off because they'll be replaced with gratitude and with worship, and God will realign us the way we need to be aligned. Verse 8 says, See to it that there is no one who takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception in accordance with human tradition, in accordance with the elementary principles of the world, rather than in accordance with Christ. So what can happen is, even sometimes people in the church who have good intentions, they mean well, they can focus so much on what's happening in society, in politics, even in the culture, whatever it may be. Now, God does address all of those things. But when they take the focus off of Christ and put it onto those things, it can begin to lead us down a path that's actually fighting against God's purpose for our lives. And so if that's happening, we need to come back and not let ourselves be taken captive. Verse 9 says, For in Him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form in, in Jesus. And it says, And in Him you have been made complete. And he is the head over every ruler and authority. You need to understand that today in Christ, you're complete. You're not lacking anything in him. And if you feel like you're lacking something, you need to come back and say, Holy Spirit, remind me that I am in Christ today and help me to walk in him. Help me to remain in him. As Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. He also said, abide in my love. It's the Holy Spirit's job to pour the love of Christ out, the love of the Father out into our hearts every day. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying, and I'm with you. For those that, this is for those that know Jesus. He's saying, I'm with you and I'm willing to do that for you. 
I love to do it for you. <laughs> oh man, I hear the Lord saying, I'm not missing one chance to pour my love out into your heart. If you'll only open it up, open up, let me in. Let me come in and show you how much I love you, what I've purposed for you. I've already planned it ahead of time. It's a good plan. It's a good purpose that I have for you. I'm not missing one thing. I'm not missing one thing. I haven't left anything out of the equation. But if you will begin to open yourself up to me, the Lord is saying, I'll begin to reveal to you why I've even put those desires in your heart that you didn't know were from me, but they were good desires. And the Lord's not talking about evil things, not talking about sinful things. He's talking about the good things He's placed there, okay, y'all? But I hear the Lord saying, I'll begin to explain to you the reason why I put those things there, why I gave you those desires, and they will begin to align with the purpose I have for you. You'll begin to see the full picture, why I made you the way you are. Man, I hear the Lord saying, some people, you've experienced immense rejection based on the way you are. He's not talking about sin issues now. He's talking about personality traits and things like that and, and gifts and callings and passion. For some people, you, you've experienced immense rejection based on the way that I designed you. But if you will come to me and allow me to remove the fear and remove the rejection, replace it with acceptance in my presence, I'm going to show you why those things are there, why you were made that way. I have a purpose for you. I have a reason that I've created you and have designed you the way that I did. Don't be afraid to show those things to me in my presence. Don't be afraid to come in and say, Lord, I've been hurt. I've been rejected by people. I need you to make me whole. And I hear the Lord saying, and I will reveal to you that I already have made you whole in Christ. You already are complete in Him. But I'll also show you the full picture as time goes on so that you can step more fully into what I've called you to, what I have for you. Listen, y'all. You need to understand that in Christ you are fully accepted in the Father's house. Colossians 2, 13-14 says this. It says, And when you were dead in your wrongdoings and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He made you alive together with Him, having forgiven us all our wrongdoings. It doesn't say some. It says all our wrongdoings are forgiven in Jesus. And it says, Having canceled the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and He has taken it out of the way. He's not going to bring it back up again. He's taking it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King Jesus, for what you did for us at the cross at Calvary. We just praise you right now. We thank you right now, Lord. There's no one like you. There's no one greater than you. There's no one who can save us but you. We don't have any master or any Lord but you, Jesus. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I just worship you right now. And I want to say thank you for all that you have done for each one of us in Jesus mighty name. So I hope y'all have enjoyed this message. I love y'all so much. I'll see you next time.